guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with the beginning of a reading vlog that I'm very excited for. Of course, my neighbors decide to start mowing and doing yard work as soon as I sit down to film. So hopefully you can hear that, but I'm here with a reading vlog where I'm gonna read my favorite authors that I've only read one slash one and a half books from that I am sure are my favorite authors, but I need to read more from them to like establish that they're favorite authors. So I'm just doing this where I'm reading authors who I've loved, loved, loved their first book, and I think I'm gonna love the next book I read by them. So I have four books I'm gonna read for this reading vlog. The first one should be no surprise. It's gonna be QB Tyler. I am obsessed with Forget Me Not. I think that was the one of her releases though that was most what I was gonna love though her new book sounds right on my alley So I'm very excited for that But this one and her other one are forbidden romances this one I believe so I think the other one it might be a stepdad romance I don't know I don't remember what that one is but this one is a guy like a guardian romance so I'm pretty sure her parents died and he like takes care of her why does this synopsis does not sound like anything I thought it was gonna be so it says that he vowed to save protect and love her and now 10 years later so I don't know I don't know I don't know I thought and I think he's a police officer I, I don't know I could be making all of this up but I'm gonna read this and I hope that I really really love this then I have the ebook of the Viscount made me do it by Diana Quincy this one comes out in I think July and you guys know if you watch me I'm obsessed with her night with the Duke so this one is book two and this one is the Duke's best friend and he I believe was accused of like killing his entire family because his entire family was massacred and he was left untouched and people think that he did it he didn't and it is his romance with with a London bone setter of Arab descent who is dangerously attracted to her Viscount client. I love that. So I'm assuming it's a class difference because she works and he's a Viscount. The ending says Hannah has a gift for fixing fractured people but can she also mend a broken heart? And more importantly, will Griff let her? I love it. I love it. I'm so excited for this book. So I'm definitely gonna read it for this video. I've read her first book in the series and absolutely, absolutely loved it. So I hope I love this one too. Then we have the second historical romance on here and that is The Duke I Tempted by Scarlett Peckham. You guys know I was obsessed with the Ray Kess so I need to read more by her. This one I actually have on audio so I'm excited to listen to that and this is very different though I think he is part of an illicit secret club and this he needs a wife and she is an ambitious self-taught botanist and I think she needs money for something she's trying to make a nursery business so I am very interested in reading this I've heard of mixed things but I love the Ray Kess that has mixed feelings too so hopefully I enjoy this one and the last one's kind of cheating because I read technically two books but one of them was a novella and so that is The Hitman by Katrina Jackson I loved Private Eye and then the novella before this was something beautiful and dirty beautiful and dirty was before this it was a novella i absolutely loved it but i'm not counting that as a full actual novel but i've loved two books then by this author but i'm really excited to read this one he is a hitman the heroine it's like right before her wedding and her fiance cheats on her and then she gets like roped into a hitman and people are trying to kill them so this sounds amazing it's her romance with the hitman so i'm excited i had to add this to the tbr because i want to see if katrina jackson is my fave because I think she is. So I have four books on this TBR. I'm so excited to be reading these. So I'm gonna go get reading and up to you guys when I've read some more. I don't even know what I wanna start with. I'm definitely gonna read this audiobook next, but I'm listening to a different audiobook first. And then I'm gonna get to this one. And then I don't know what I wanna pick up first. I don't know, maybe QB Tyler because I've been super obsessed with her lately. So we'll see. Am I here with Miss Lily? Yes. I was sitting here and then Lily decided she wanted my spot. So she got my spot. So. I am 120 pages, exactly 120 pages into this, and I'm conflicted because she's 17, and I don't like reading books about teenagers with grown men, and I feel like I would like this better if it was like she was 20. Like, why couldn't we have pushed it up a little bit in how old she was? And he's like, oh, we have to wait till you're 18. And her 18th birthday is next month. So it is, he's raised her for the past 10 years. And <laughs> my sister's face right now. <laughs> 
sister, it's fine. They make it clear that he has never been like a dad to her. Like she's always called him Cal. She's always talked to him like he is just like someone close to her but not a father so they make that clear and we're already at the point though like we're dumped in the story when she's had feelings for him for like three years now and he sees her in that way too now and it's fine i'm just like why make her that young and i know that's a common like trope done it makes me think of the carrie and cole book i don't remember what it's called but that one where she fell for her like basically like uncle figure it's her dad's best friend and there was like a 10 year age gap between them not 10 i want to say it was like 16 because or 15 her dad had her really 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 young and that's why like there wasn't too big of a gap between her and her dad's best friend and she i think she was 17 in that book too and i just really didn't like that book and i feel like this one's the same kind of thing i get like this is the trope it's using this is the genre it's using and it's definitely a forbidden age gap taboo romance they are like what if we do get together like what is everybody gonna say because she uh, is really close with his parents and she's really close with his brother and his brother's wife and they've known her as like his ward I guess not like his child but like part of his life but they know people are going to judge them if they actually do get together so it's fine I just don't I just don't want her to be 17 I wish she was if she was 20 if she was in college maybe I would be okay with this but I'm just ignoring the fact that she's 17 right now so i'm gonna read more i don't know if the stepfather stepdaughter books any better they're definitely much more taboo than like forget me not which i read by her i feel like her new book unlawful is gonna be amazing because i think it's about a girl who loses her love interest i think like her significant other and then the hero is gonna be there and like she's gonna fall in love again i think that's what her new book's about so i don't know if it's i don't know i shouldn't have picked this one up because i thought she'd be older <laughs> i didn't know she'd be 17. i knew that was the trope i knew she was raised by him he's a police officer he's a police chief now he's 30 33 yes he's 33. oh so there's did i it's been 10 years but he's 16 years older than her so i feel like it's just like that carrie and cold book but it's fine so far so i'm gonna keep on reading and we'll see if i like it I swear it's a little later and I've been doing stuff and then sitting down and reading and doing stuff. So we've we've moved a bit and then come back to our places we were at last clip. But I am uh, 200 pages into this now. And I am not loving it because of the age difference because she is 17. And I was happy because Aria, his... Uh, brother's wife and his brother are both like this is disgusting like you should not be together she raised her she's too young like it's not even legal like what are you doing and he was all like i know i'm a monster for doing this but <laughs> i'm gonna get a little spoiler here so i'll put a spoiler thing at the bottom so just know that his mom's completely fine with it and i'm just like She's like, oh, well, you've always only had eyes for each other, and I always knew. And they all th know, like, Arya is super into him because it's, like, obvious she's super attracted to him as a teenager. But, oh, sorry, my sister just got home, so I'm going to talk fast but i'm just like not rooting for the relationship he just insinuated they he knows they're gonna get married and i feel like this has gone way too quickly i mean i know they've known each other for 10 years and lived together for 10 years but it just went so fast to like we're madly hopelessly in love and we're gonna be together forever so we'll see how it ends if she were older i'd be fine but it's just that age it's just too much for me hey guys so i finished it is um i think almost 9 30 and i finished unconditional and i'm gonna give it three stars because of just the book itself not like it's like okay so my main problem you guys know is that the character 17 and it was pretty insta love like we didn't see this romantic connection like developing we just are dropped in when she's 17 he is 30 three and they've known each other for 10 years he's been raising her and i said she didn't see him as a father figure but it has the daddy thing in here and she's like i ironically called him daddy and i'm just like <laughs> no i was already having an issue with the fact that she was 17 and he was 33 and that he had raised her and um then she goes and does that so i didn't like that and i feel like he didn't act like 33 i mean he he acted like a teenager to me like he was just literally obsessed with their physical relationship and that was it they didn't really talk about anything there was anything more to their relationship i just wanted so much more 
development. Like, why did he like her? There was no reason other than that he was physically attracted to her. So I really wanted a lot more development there. I mean, that kind of like played into the whole insta love thing. So I just didn't love this. And I'm really sad because then like nobody cared that they were together. And I was just like, this is not realistic. I mean, it's not supposed to be realistic, but I just could not get past that. And so I know that's like a whole trope, a whole category of romance, that kind of forbidden romance, but... I don't gel well with underage things. So three out of five stars. I still enjoyed the romance. Like I didn't hate the book, so I'm not giving it two stars, but it was hard for me to like, but I still liked like the author's writing and things at the end went crazy. I kind of knew what was coming because of Goodreads reviews. I, if I'm on the fence about a book, I always go and look at Goodreads reviews while I'm reading it and someone had spoiled <laughs> what was happening at the end, this big twist, which I appreciated something like more happening in the plot and like something else driving our characters away from each other because I did appreciate like neither of them super pulled away because it's really annoying when it's a forbidden romance and they keep on like constantly back and forth, back and forth. Like, oh, we can't do it, but we are. Oh, but we can't. Like that never happened in here. So I'm glad that didn't happen, but I just couldn't love this. And I think I don't want to read her other one. I don't know. Love Unexpected is a stepdaughter, stepfather romance. And I've heard though that she is legal in that one, but her new one, I think I'm going to like, like I've already told you guys. So hopefully I read her new book and love it because I think I need to stay away from her forbidden stuff and enjoy more of her adult romance stuff. But I did start The Duke I Tempted by Scarlett Peckham and I'm loving it. I am three and a half hours in the audiobook because I was sewing and listening to the audiobook and it's amazing. Our heroine, she loves plants and she is designing like a whole garden theme for this ball and it's the Duke's, I think, no, it's not his sister. Someone really close to the Duke is throwing this party and hires her to decorate it. And she pretty much bribes her and says like, I'll give you men to help like move your greenhouse stuff because she, the person whose property she used died and she doesn't have any claim to that property anymore, but it is her th stuff. So she's moving it and there's this like gross guy who thinks he's like gonna marry her and she's like, absolutely not. And her and the Duke share a moment and it's so good. And he though is very, very damaged he did lose someone in the past and so he pulls away very, very often from her because of that and she thinks it's because of her and he's like no it's me it's not you and i'm really really loving it so far uh, he does require pain to get over his emotional pain so he does go to some special clubs to receive that pain and i know that's going to come into play later on in the book like with her i have seen some things like good reads though that there might be some cheating in here so i don't know what that's going to involve but i'm absolutely loving it so far i really really love their relationship at one point she gets hurt so they have to ride in a horse together and i love the one horse trope so this is going really well so far i can't wait to read more tomorrow hey guys so excuse mess i just mowed the lawn and it's 80 degrees out it was really hot but i want to show you i did finish my scarlet peckham book while i was sewing so i'm going to show you real quick what i was sewing because i'm really excited about it so i used to make mug rugs all the time and i decided to start making them again so they're like basically coasters that you put your drinks on and i have two at school and i have like a bunch sitting around here because i have one there i have one there this is like my sewing area and so i made a ton over the past two days this is my favorite. I'm keeping one of these for me. And I'm super excited to make more because I have a lot of extra fabric laying around that's perfect for this size. It's five by six inches. And yeah, I've been sewing. Have some more sleeves to go up while listening to my audiobooks. I do have a bunch of sleeves over here. My Etsy shop's always linked down below along with a coupon code. So these are all, this is new. This is adorable. I don't know why no one's bought it yet. Look how cute, they're little hedgehogs. I do have some big size of the Little Mermaid. I have some flowers, lots of flowers, cactus. I have a bunch of Kindle ones and Kindle Fire ones going up. This is one of my favorites, it's a typewriter. And I have little plants. I have a lot of sleeves that I make each week while I listen to audiobooks. I did finish The Duke I Tempted and I'm giving him four and a half stars. I love this. He does like kind of cheat, but not, in a way that bothered me. I understood like why he did what he did and I didn't feel like it was a complete violation of his relationship with her. It 
was because he can't confide in her and he's still completely broken over what had happened to him. He did have to grovel because of it. Like she found out she was sad and that's when he realized he should have confided in her because she wasn't like horrified about what she found out about him. She was more disappointed he didn't share it with her and so then he groveled. I really loved what he tried to do to show her that he really loved her and cared for her. It was so good. I love the angst. Like he was definitely still grieving his wife and his child and she just wants to have her plants and she wants to have this business and she's really headstrong and I love a heroine who has like a business or a job that's really fun for me and it always interferes with their romance because they're so dedicated to their job that they don't want a romance to interfere with that and in this case though the romance was going to help because he had pretty much bribed her to marry him through her business because he's like i'll help you i'll give you literally everything to help you with your business and so i really like that and i like how they met because she was helping his sister with a ball i thought that was really fun and making it into like this grand like nature thing and i just really really enjoyed this it wasn't too long it was a really sweet romance kind of steamy by the end because of what he was wanting that's all i'll say about that but I really enjoyed it. I know a lot of people are like iffy on Scarlett Peckham. I just think that I'm one of the people who loves her. I know that Crystal really loves Scarlett Peckham, and so I am on board with Crystal because we both loved the Bray Kess. I know Lacey has been like lukewarm about those two books by Scarlett Peckham, so she's not for everybody, but I really love her books. So four and a half stars for this one, and then I started, I just put it somewhere, here it is. I started the hitman and i'm really enjoying it so far she figured out that her fiance was cheating on her with a high-end stripper and her uh, maid of honor and so now she's in italy and our hero's in italy and he's an assassin and so or like a hitman and they're kind of meeting each other for the first time and he's like really annoyed because their rooms are next to each other and he's like she cries all night long and it's so annoying and it's really fun so i'm excited to read some more it makes me want to like go on vacation because they're just in a villa and or like a uh, hotel place in Italy hanging by the pool and I'm like I want to do that so I'm really enjoying it I'm gonna read some more and I will update you guys later and of course I have my hello lovely shirt on what am I not wearing hello lovely that is the question so we just had some dinner got on the couch and little miss immediately got into my lap we have miss Lily here excuse the uh, laundry over there Mr. C, Mr. C, you're so pretty. She's just so happy in my lap. She's just so cute. I have some updates for you. So I messaged Crystal about Scarlet Peckham because I was reading reviews again and people hated the book. And I'm just like, why do people not like it? I love Scarlet Peckham. And she was like, I know, right? Because the Duke I Tempted was one of her favorites of last year. So the books that Crystal read. So I'm glad I read it and that I loved it. And I'll continue reading Scarlet Peckham because I love her. But I finished The Hitman and I think I'm going to give it four stars, maybe four and a half, because I really, really love their romance. They were just so attracted to each other and into each other. And that's what they both needed. He doesn't do relationships and he has an awful father and she is like i can't trust men ever again because my boyfriend fiance of like six years cheated on me and it was horrifying and so they just give in to each other kind of blindly trust each other and then their the like suspense part didn't really happen until like halfway through maybe like 150 pages in and i expected it to be more suspenseful considering it's called the hitman i thought that that would start a lot earlier and it didn't so and it wasn't really that like they weren't running from anything really it's just only twice men showed up to try to kill them but i didn't feel like a lot of suspense i guess which i expected so that's why i knocked it down a little bit because i feel like what i expected and i don't know if it's my fault or the book's like title cover and synopsis is fault i don't know i was expecting a little bit more action a little bit more oh they're running together and like falling in love while they're running but it was like oh they didn't weren't really super running away it just didn't feel like a lot of high stakes to me but i really enjoyed it and then at the end we got a chapter from the guy's perspective from the first book the beautiful and dirty right i think that was the first book called and he was like reflecting on the romance he had and i really liked it so this one was just a lot of fun shows me again i love katrina jackson so so far we're two for three which I'm very happy with, but I'm gonna start Diana Quincy's. I read like five pages so far and I am obsessed. So she is definitely a very fun character. I don't wanna spoil how it starts because I was pleasantly surprised and I was like, yes, this is awesome. You are awesome. I love it. So it's interesting though because jewelry from Griffin's or Griff's parents, 
is showing up. He's seen two pieces of jewelry now that they were wearing when they were murdered. So he's like, something's going on. So I'm excited to read more. I'm about to watch National Treasure though because I need to edit a video or some good reads reviews. And I've been in the mood for either The Mummy or National Treasure. And I landed on National Treasure because I recently watched The Mummy. So I also ordered a book that's a historical romance that people told me was like National Treasure. Well, not people told me. I saw someone post that it was like National Treasure. So I bought it. I don't remember the title but i'll show you if it comes soon it's supposed to come soon so maybe if it comes tomorrow i'll show you but i'm so excited to spend the night reading diana quincy's book because literally five pages in i'm loving it so i have high hopes for this book <gasps> the cutie oh hi you're so good i know what time is it oh, it's four o'clock we still have a little bit i'm like profusely sweating so there was a spider in one of our skylights and it kept on like coming out of the skylight going back in the sky like coming out and went over against that wall up there and then it finally went up there and i was like i cannot <laughs> deal with this spider being in the house it definitely looked giant and apparently wasn't that big when we killed it because i was upstairs and i we got the swiffer our parents have like an extension pole thing that we've borrowed from them sometimes like a duster but we don't have that we just have a swiffer and so i went up there and i was trying to like hit it with socks so that it would fall down and my aim is terrible and i couldn't do that so lily was having a blast though like chasing all the socks she loves socks so she was down here just running around but finally it like got close enough where i could knock it down with the swiffer and then my sister killed it when we saw it fall down to the floor but what an experience i was just upstairs sweating profusely trying to kill this spider because i was not going to be able to like rest and feel relaxed with the spider on my ceiling because who knows where it would go when i'm not looking so and i was afraid that it would like drop down you know because spiders can do that but it's dead, so it's fine. But I just want to talk to you guys because I'm here with Miss Darcy. It is Saturday, and I'm almost halfway done with the, the Viscount something. The Diana Quincy book. I'll put a photo up next to me. I was really loving the beginning, but I do think there's like a not enough urgency on Griff's part because like the whole premise is that he knows that Hannah has his parents' jewelry from the night that they got slaughtered, murdered. They were like bludgeoned to death with knives and he's like slept through it all he didn't hear anything and he took forever to even like ask her about it and i'm like you are so adamant trying to figure out what happened to your parents and it just feels like it's not important and he finally like talked to her and it just feels very not urgent it's just like oh i guess we can try to find out where this came from i wanted more urgency in that i wanted a little bit more like suspense what are you going boo she's mad at me it's fine a little bit more suspense in there and i'm not loving the romance as much as i want to i mean i know they like each other it's a class difference because she is from the working class and she's arab and he is a viscount she didn't know he was a viscount either i'm not like super attached and loving it here comes lily hi oh thank you what i know she was just downstairs with my sister working out the socks got her really excited, I'm telling you. I know, you okay? It's also an hour until they eat. She gets excited. But anyways, I'm not like absolutely in love. I'm not hating it. I really like the premise. I like how she fixed his arm and how she's trying to open up her own place for people to come where she's opening it with a friend who's a doctor and she's the bone setter and so they're gonna help people even though people think like she is a hoax like that she doesn't actually help people. Like even his uncle was like, oh, she didn't help you. It was just like, a coincidence like that's your body healing itself oh two years later it's just so happened when she was fixing you so it's interesting i haven't read a heroine like her before i think it's really fun when they're in the medical field but i don't know how i feel about the romance so far and we're only halfway through so we'll see how it ends i just woke her up but she's so tired you're so cute oh it's big stretchy hi so it is like nine o'clock now i finished the book and i'm giving it three and a half rounding up to four i feel like it just fell short everywhere so the romance i wanted a little bit more like chemistry and like connection between them i didn't really really feel it i know i was supposed to but i didn't and the whole mystery like really was supposed to be driving the plot and i just fell short of caring about the mystery of who killed Griff's parents. I feel like he didn't really care. Like the whole premise was that, I mean, he cared, but like he was wanting to find out who actually did it, but he didn't like drive the investigation really that much. Like he went places and he's like, well, I haven't gotten the courage up yet to go and look for this thing, or I haven't gotten the courage to go to this place to find things. And it's just like, he was dragging his feet to get to the answer. And I was like, dude, come on, let's like, 
get going don't you want to figure out who killed your parents so people stop thinking you did it and like there were secrets that popped up and i feel like halfway through it was pretty obvious who did it so i would have liked less of an obvious answer but like more urgency and i feel like he was just this like brooding damaged hero in the first book but he didn't seem as brooding and damaged in this book and i i don't know i was just missing that element from him like i said like things just fell a little short everywhere it was a big deal that she liked someone who wasn't arab and she kept on saying that every time like they were talking about being together she's like well i can't I have to marry someone who's arab and it just felt like it was something she was saying and that didn't really feel until the end when we saw more of her family. I think that her family should have been in there more, though I'm interested to see if there's going to be a third book between his friend and her brother because there was something hinted there. So it was good. I liked the author's note at the end about bone setters. I think it was really cool having someone in the medical field and it was a class difference. She really wanted to work and Griff couldn't stay away from her and I really liked that. I liked his family and how things developed there. It was just like little places things just fell a bit short for me everywhere else. I'm still really excited to read more from this author. I still love the first book, but I just didn't absolutely fall in love with this book, which is fine. It was still good. Just fell short in a couple places, but overall I read four books and this was pretty successful. I enjoyed most of the things that I read. I know what I want from certain authors, so like QB Tyler I know. Stay away from those taboo romances and just read her adult romances, which I think is her new one coming out, which is I'm really excited to read. And all the other ones, I know that I do enjoy their writing and I do enjoy their books. Are they all time favorites? I think I'll have to read a couple more books to determine that with these authors, but they are authors that I'm excited to read more from that I can definitely count as authors I really enjoy. So let me know if you've read these authors and how you determine if an author is a favorite or not. And that's all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.